Hi there, welcome to the Visual ModFlow Flex video training series. My name is Brady McNeil and I'm the lead software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll review the available methods for assigning boundary conditions within Visual ModFlow Flex. Please note that this video focuses on the numerical modeling approach. Assigning boundary conditions during the conceptual modeling workflow is covered in a separate video. After defining flow and transport properties, the next workflow step in Visual ModFlow Flex is the define boundary conditions step. As you can see, the interface for the defined boundary conditions and defined properties workflow steps are very similar. The defined boundary conditions step also includes a flex viewer, which allows you to review your model in layer, row, column, and 3D views all at the same time. But for the duration of this video, I'm going to be focusing on the layer view. This workflow step also includes a toolbox to the left of the viewer, which includes several menus. The first menu under the toolbox allows you to select from the supported boundary condition groups. Supported boundary conditions include constant head, river, general head, drain, wall, recharge, evapotranspiration, lake, specified flux, and wells. For contaminant transport models, an additional uh, boundary condition group is available, specifically the constant concentration boundary. Please note that when transport modeling is active, each boundary condition type will also include a concentration field. This means that you do not need to define separate cell geometries for transport boundaries. You simply define species concentrations while defining the flow boundary conditions where required. Constant concentration is the exception to this rule since it does not need to coincide with a prescribed flux. The second menu under the toolbox is to import pre-existing boundary conditions. Please note that this operation will only work if the imported boundary came from a model that had the exact same grid structure as the current model. To import a boundary condition, you must provide a text file in IJK format. Simply browse to the file and select Open to import the boundary condition. This option is very useful when making edits to boundary conditions in text format outside of the VMOD Flex interface. Those edited files can simply be re-imported with a few clicks. As an example, I can import a constant head boundary condition in the area inside the green circle here in my site. All I have to do is click the Import button, select the required file, and then click Open. You should immediately see the new boundary condition in the viewer window. The third menu under the toolbox provides you with several options on how to assign new boundary conditions. The Cells options allows you to manually select individual cells to be assigned for a new boundary condition. Simply select the cells and when you're finished, click, when you're finished selecting the cells, click the Finish button under the toolbox. That will open the Divine Boundary Condition window. As you can see, the boundary condition type has already been automatically selected based on my selection from the toolbox. The next step is simply to assign attribute values for the boundary condition. As I mentioned before, when transport is active, um, you should see an additional field for contaminant concentrations as shown right here. When you're finished assigning attribute values, just click finish and once again the boundary condition will be assigned. The polyline and polygon options allows you to basically draw a polyline or a polygon to delineate the extent of a new boundary condition. Just click left click once to draw a vertex and then right click and select finish to finish drawing the polyline or polygon. Once again, you would simply have to assign uh, attribute values, and when that's done, you click Finish, and the boundary condition will be created. Finally, you may assign a new boundary condition using an existing data object. This option allows you to use a points, polyline, or polygon data object from the data tree to define the extents of the new property zone. For example, I could use uh, an existing polyline data object, which describes the location of the Waterloo River, to define a river boundary condition. Simply click Assign using Data Object, and then I would select the required polyline from the data tree and load it into the Define Boundary Conditions window using the blue arrow button. Once again, if we go to the next page, I would simply have to enter some uh, parameter values. Uh, you can use the toolbar buttons here if you want to assign the same value to every cell. and click Finish to finalize the boundary condition. All boundary conditions can be assigned using the same set of tools which I've just described. However, please note that some boundary condition types can only be assigned in particular ways. 
For example, if we select the recharge boundary condition, you're actually able to assign recharge to an entire layer in the model. This option won't be available for most other boundary conditions. Another example is the wall boundary condition, which can only be assigned using existing data objects. For walls, you would have to use a polyline data object to describe the location of the wall, and two surfaces to describe the vertical, ex vertical extents of that wall boundary condition. There are a few other exceptions, but you can visit our user manual to learn about the data requirements and available methods for assigning different boundary condition types. And please note that many of these same methods can be applied during other steps in the modeling process, including assigning property zones, observation data for calibration purposes, mod path particles, and zone budget zones. Once you've used the tools uh, previously described to assign the location for your boundary conditions, uh, again the Define Boundary Conditions window will open up. As I mentioned before, the Boundary Condition Type field will already be selected based on your selection from the toolbox. So the first step in this window is to provide a name for the new boundary condition. By default, the boundary will, will be assigned a name equivalent to the type of the boundary condition, appended by a number if there are multiple instances of that boundary condition type. When you've defined the name, click Next, and at this point you would actually have to enter attribute values for the boundary condition. The attributes listed in this window will depend on the type of boundary condition that you're defining. For more information about the data required for different types of boundary conditions, again, please refer to our user manual. You'll have to enter values on a cell-by-cell -cell basis, um, but once again, there are toolbar buttons available. If you have uh, constant values across the entire boundary condition, you can simply assign a single value to the entire row, or to the entire column, rather. And please note that boundary conditions can change in magnitude over time. If you do have a time-varying boundary condition, you can change the schedule from static to transient. This will activate a table on the left-hand side of the Define Boundary Conditions window. You can use some of these toolbar buttons to add additional stress periods to, to that table or to remove them as required. Simply enter a start time and an end time for each interval, and then you can select the particular intervals to update the, the table on the right-hand side to see the actual values for that uh, time period. Once these values have been assigned to the boundary condition, click Finish to finalize the process. Again, you should immediately see the new boundary condition appear in the viewer window. At this stage, you can click on the Edit button um, to select the boundary and then load the edit condition, boundary condition window. Please note that you'll only be able to select boundaries of the same type currently selected under the toolbox. So if I have river selected here and I try to edit one of my constant head boundary conditions, nothing will happen. But as soon as I click on my river boundary condition, the edit boundary condition window opens up. Now the fifth option under the toolbox is for erasing different boundary conditions. Uh, erasing boundary conditions pretty much has the same tools as assigning boundary conditions. You can assign or delete or erase boundaries based on a single cell by cell basis using polylines or polygons, or you can delete entire groups at once. In either case, just make your selection, click Finish, and the selected boundary should disappear. Uh, once again, make sure that you've selected the correct boundary condition type under the toolbox, otherwise the erase uh, function won't really work. The final option under the Erase um, menu is to erase an entire group of boundary conditions. Um, so in that case, if you select Group and just select one of the boundary condition cells contained within a group, and that entire boundary condition group will be deleted. Finally, some boundary conditions can be copied to additional model layers using the Copy button under the toolbox. If I select the Copy button, a window opens up which lists all of the available boundary conditions of that type within the current model. I can then select as many of them as I like and select the layers that I would like to see them copied to. When I'm finished making my selection, I simply click OK, and then if I view um, model layers 2, 3, and 4, you can see that my constant head boundary conditions have been copied down to those lower model layers. Once again, please note that different boundary conditions are often based on different data types. 
therefore the options for assigning and reviewing boundaries may vary for different types of boundary conditions and you can review our user manual for more detailed information about each boundary condition type. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Visual Modflow Flex training videos. The next video in the series will discuss the translation of model input files and the actual running of your groundwater model. For additional training resources, including user manuals and free tutorials, please visit the Visual Modflow Flex support page on our website. A link is provided in the video description.